Hey friends out there, Rob here. Today I want to talk to you about something exciting from Yellowbox. You'll notice that the team over at YoloLive have had a big announcement and you probably read it on the title up above here, but if you haven't, hold on a second for the excitement to build. I want to share with you Yellowbox Original, OG as we call it over on the forums. I have been streaming with this for about two years. Just after it came out, I picked it up and it completely revolutionized my workflow. It took everything that I would normally need to take with me on a live stream and put it into one field monitor, recorder, encoder, and live stream device that had very easy connection to Facebook or YouTube and gave me two HDMI inputs so that I could stream with two cameras, SD card videos, and have titles and scoreboards all in one small device. It was great then, and it's gotten even better. I wanna to talk to you about this next product, Yolo Box Pro. When the team over at Yolo Live came out with Yolo Box Pro, they also came out with green screen and chroma keying and some additional updates to it. But the number one thing was a better processor as well as three HDMI inputs across the top. This was also a game changer and that was about a year ago. It got bigger, the screen got brighter and the recording quality settings were even updated to 50,000 kilobits a second for internal recording in monitor mode. That's pretty awesome. With the advent of this, we now have three total choices to stream when streaming from variable bitrate, constant quality, or constant bitrate, and we can stream at 8,000 kilobits a second, up to 30 frames a second, on Yolobox Pro and Yolobox OG. So let me tell you, how excited do you think I was a couple months ago when Yolobox contacted me and asked me if I wanted to review and help them, you know, bug and troubleshoot Yolobox Mini. This thing is one HDMI connection, small, on your camera, up to 60 frames a second. It's kind of, it's, well, it's kind of amazing, guys. I am so excited about this product. And I can't wait to share with you why I like it. But the number one lead feature is twofold. One input means lower price. And 60 frames a second means it's perfectly aimed towards people that are attempting to stream as vloggers, build a YouTube channel, want to show something live like a performance or Heck, even a martial arts competition, this product gets you there and it gets you there lower than the even original Yolobox price. Now, I can't release final product pricing information right now because I don't even know it, but it will come in at the lowest price level that they have. If you thought that wasn't enough, not only is the price lower, you're still going to get that same great Yolobox experience, that great firmware, which means you're getting uh, titles and overlays and uh, countdown timers, and you're going to get scoreboards all right here with that easy streaming and encoding settings and the monitor mode and an HDMI out and pro monitoring with line and mic level signals, <laughs> all in this smaller package. <laughs> it's really kind of amazing. So. If you want to know about any specific thing, don't forget to check the timestamps down below. It's all around there. And uh, yeah, let's jump into that walk around. So let's discuss the setup we have as our test rig today before we get into the walk around and the menu system of the Yellow Box Mini. Of course, it starts with our Yellow Box Mini. This is how we would live stream. We also have a Vaxxus wireless transmitter. This is an HDMI out in this case, but it could be a transmitter to come in if we had an additional source we wanted to add. Looking over here, we're using the Panasonic HCX2000. And we've got it set up right here under some little tripod feet to help for stabilization. Now, something we want to talk about here is actually the menu system and how we'll be showing some video while I'm discussing this. So you just won't see the side of my room. I do have an HDMI video playing on thumbnail right here, which I'll press play when it's appropriate. Let's go ahead and lower the front so that you can see a nice little walk around. And we'll look at the top right here. Uh, going from left to right, you're going to see a USB-C charging port. This is how you can get some juice into your box when you need it. You're going to see a headphone out for monitoring. You then see two headphone jacks in. Both of these are eighth inch, but they are designated line and mic. This is an actual line and mic signal, which the mic signal is not as hot as the line signal. So use the mic when appropriate or line if you have a Z-Box or additional gear that needs to go in. We have an Ethernet port for our LAN connection if we wanted to connect hardwire. We also have an HDMI out that would connect to the Vaxxus if I had that set up currently. And now we have a USB port and this would allow for a webcam to be connected. And we have our HDMI port. Both of these are how we get video into Yolobox, but only one in the current firmware is active at any given time. So you can only choose to use your HDMI in or your USB in. You cannot use both at the same time. As we look down at the bottom, I can't show it very well, there is an SD card right here, as well as a SIM card slot right there. So Yolobox Mini can connect to the internet three ways. By the SIM card through your cellular connector, 
through the Wi-Fi that's built in or through the Ethernet port, whichever way you prefer. All right, once you power on Yolobox, this is the screen you will be greeted with. If you have any current or previous streams, they will be in here. We have a button to add a stream, and we have a couple of buttons at the top that are gonna allow us to change our menu settings. But a couple of things to note. First, we have our kilobits up and down. That's our transmission speed. We have our currently wireless sync time. We have our Wi-Fi or SD card or SIM card indicator, and we have our battery percentage. If at any point we want to brighten the screen, we can simply scroll down from the top and then brighten the screen by moving the bar left to right. When we go into our network settings, you can actually see we have Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and an RTMPS server. We can set all of those by connecting each one. And with Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, it's as easy as signing in. With the RTMPS, all we need to do is set up that server using the easy specify specifications that Yolobox has given us. It's not difficult. As we've signed in and we moved around here, we noticed a couple of other important things. Our main account, which syncs this device to the Yololive servers, which allows all of our previously created streams to sync across any additional Yolobox devices. Going back into our menu settings, we're gonna see we have about device, which will tell you your firmware, language if you need to change that, network settings version as far as an upgrade if it's possible, and time zone set. There are a few additional settings down here that we can get to, recordings, frequently asked questions that will take you to the Yellow Box website. We have screen rotate in case you need to rotate it so that you can have the screen show up upside down. If you want your connections that are currently on the top, they could be on the bottom by pressing the rotate button. And then we have logout and factory reset settings. An important thing to note here is network settings. When we go into network settings, we can choose a network connection and we can also test our network right here. Now setting up a network connection is pretty easy, just like you would expect. And before each stream in my standard operating procedures for my team, we need to do three different network tests in order to determine our download and upload speed specifically so that we can set our encoding settings, which we will talk about later. Uh, you can see here right now that my download is pretty good. We're clicking in right around 100 megabits per second download. And once this finishes out, we'll see that our upload is going to be somewhere around uh, 10 megabits per second. So there, as you can see, we have a ping of 11 milliseconds. We have download of 101. We have upload of 10. This means that I'm really set up. If I'm the only person using this connection, I could stream at Yolobox's max rate of around 80,000 uh, uh, kilobits or 8,000 kilobits per second, which is eight megabits per second at no real problem in this particular instant. Now that we've done that and we've had a look around, the other important things to talk about are our streams. We're gonna jump into one in just a moment, but when you go to set up a stream, you can actually create a stream or go into monitor mode. I wanna share with you one thing about encoding settings in monitor mode. Once you actually meet monitor mode, which we'll find out down here, and I am, I am skipping ahead just a little bit, our encoding setting allows us to encode up to 5,000 all the way up to 50,000 kilobits per second in monitor mode. That's a pretty nice stream if we wanted to create, but this is only internally recording. This is not streaming at the same time. We'll discuss those, seconds, uh, those settings a lot more in just a moment. Let's go into a test that we have already created, and this one is our Yellow Box mini video. Streaming would be pretty simple. In this instance, I'm going to come down here onto my next screen and I'm pressing play on that thumbnail video I told you about earlier. That way you could see something that's actually happening. Currently our, sc our screen is set up, but we are not actually set up to broadcast anywhere. In order to do that, we go to our broadcast connections. In our broadcast connections, we could come over here, click one of those settings that we have already set up in the menu, right? And then once they're set up, we can choose to connect to it. Now I chose an unlisted setting right now, just so that you will see that it is ready to go and clicking on the other side of the screen, we can actually see that we're ready to get ready streaming. If we were to click go live, it would simply ask, are we ready? Cancel is no, done in this instance means yes, we are ready. I'm gonna click go live and I'll click done. Now, as we're going live here, I'm gonna talk about some of these other settings, but some won't be able to be changed. What I'd like to share with you is that in this mode, we are streaming at 8,000 kilobits per second 30 frames a second, no drop rate, and it tells us that we're live. In this particular setting, we can also see that we're live over here to YouTube. If we're using Yolobox's rebroadcast servers, which is a free service, we would see additional services that were set up and streaming where our content was being delivered. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this stream right now. In fact, I'll just pause it. So let's talk about some additional settings. From left to right, we've got image overlays, 
In this instance, if you had an image that you wanted to overlay, you could create one or choose one that you already had. I'm going to choose an It's Time to Fly, a, a video that I did recently, a live stream. We can scale it and resize it. And right now, everything's normal. But if I ever wanted to show that overlay, I could simply tap it. And now you'll notice that the overlay has come over top. If you wanted for the overlay to go away, you would simply tap it one more time. And now you're back to your regular video. Notice that the screen went a little dim. This is only here to help emphasize your menu choices over here. Your screen on your live stream did not actually go dim. You can have several different types of overlays, specifically lower thirds, which you can create directly on the device. Or you could also have a countdown timer. Let's go into the lower thirds for just one moment to show you how easy it is to create a lower thirds right on Yellow Box. We'll take a simple lower thirds graphic. And once we're into it, we have a preview of where that lower thirds will be which we can simply move around. We have things to enter, such as text and subtitle, which you can see right here. You can choose your title font. Several different fonts are supported, as well as your font size. Do the same for your font and your subfont and your subtitle, and even choose the background color, transparency, and then, of course, scale. Once that's done, you will then have something that's created, which in this case was very small because of that scale button. However, we can see it. When you'd like to turn that particular overlay off, you simply tap it. You can have as many of these as you would like. I've tried as many as 15 and had them all working at the same time. Moving over here, we have our audio. Currently, HDMI audio is on, and that's because on this video, playing back from my camcorder, there is audio recorded. If we chose to go ahead and edit this audio, we can go ahead and attenuate it so we have very little or no audio coming through. It's basically completely muted. Or we can overmodulate it. And as such, as I speak, you can see that the audio levels are showing a much more natural curve for where your actual levels are set. This is very helpful for when setting. But that's not all. We can also choose to have additional settings based on what is here, specifically a line in or a mic in or a USB video. And those are our audio settings. Let's move on along to scoreboards. Now, for what I do, I don't use scoreboards very often, but it is nice to have scoreboards. You can change the size, you can change the numbers, as you can see, you can adjust all of these different settings. And in scoreboard styling, you can actually set up all of the different colors and overlays. Once we're done, we have this, which we can grab and move around. When you're ready, there it goes. And when you want to turn it off, you can simply turn it off. Finally, we're going to come over here to comments. Should someone comment at this point in time, we would actually see their comments pop up right here in the comments of your video. This would give you the ability to respond to them here as well, should there be a comment. If you want to make any particular kind of comments, such as settings, you can see the type of settings and the type of profile that you can use in order to highlight comments that users have submitted. You can do that all from Yolobox without having to go to any additional software. Now we're going to go into settings. There's a couple things we want to know. Number one, we have a recording button right here, which is the camera, which would allow us to record the screen while we are live streaming. And we also have our live stream settings. Now. In order to talk about those particular encoding settings, we're going to come over here and I'm just going to create another live stream. In this place, I'm just going to call it test. Now that we've created the test, we can add a description to it and schedule a date and time. If we did schedule a date and time, we could choose today's date and we could choose a time uh, somewhere short from now, not, not AM, PM. And then we could click create. Now, as you see, our stream shows our previous streams, none of which we can get into, but it shows them there for history if we need them. We can very easily delete them by tapping and holding, and then delete. You can also delete all. But let's jump back into this stream so that we can talk about the encoding settings. My video has continued to play from my camcorder. And on this side, I want to share with you, we've got different settings, specifically 1080p, 720, and 480. We would choose this setting right now prior to setting up our live stream with our service. But if we move over here to our encoding settings, we've got a couple things. We've got SD card management, which is going to tell us how much of our SD card is available for use for recording and which particular items have been recorded. We can delete those items from this menu should we choose to. We're now going to move to program out. If we wanted our program out to show on a screen, like the one that would be behind us, we could send the entire program out, which would show all of the overlay functions to a separate monitor. This is great if you wanted to use this as a director's preview or if you wanted to show a specific setting or something that you were doing on the device itself. We go to the streaming mode. 
And here's where we're going to find that we can select multiple different sources. If we collect the Yolo Lives multiple streaming sources, we can now come back to our stream settings and platform, and we can choose not just one. It's setting up that link right now, but we can choose multiples. Both of these are ready. Now we can see two different settings down here, so where they're going to platforms where our content will be delivered, all right within Yellow Box. If you're only going to do a single platform, it would be best to use single platform. But many services are out there that will rebroadcast to multiple different content delivery networks, like YouTube and Twitch and Facebook, for you, but they do it for a charge. Yellow Live will do it for free. This comes with no membership required, just from purchasing Yellow Box. This is a serious upgrade. Now, in order to stream to those, you do have to have your stream mode set to use Yolo Live's multi-streaming service. Before we continue, I want to share with you how that streams here in just a moment. We're going to also go into our encoding settings. Now, as we move down, we have three encoding settings. Now, this is a great place to be because we have constant bit rate, constant quality, which is CQ, variable bit rate, which is VBR. We have our bit rate settings, and then we have our frames per second. And now we're going to talk about constant quality, constant bit rate, and CBR. Variable bit rate right here will actually dip the bit rate low, attempting to keep the frames high in order to make sure that your connection does not suffer. So if it's having a hard time streaming at 8,000 kilobits per second, 60 frames per second, it will keep the frame rate at 60 frames, but it will drop the bit rate. This can allow, lead to a hazy or blocky or pixelated video, but variable bit rate is specifically designed in order to keep the frame rate high. It does that at the result of image quality. Constant bit rate does something a little bit different. Constant bit rate attempts to keep your bit rate high, but will drop the frame rate in order to maintain the higher bit rate. This keeps the quality of your stream high, the picture looking good, but it could interrupt and make the image look jittery or stuttery if you were chugging out your network by overloading it. Constant quality is actually an algorithm and a video setting created by Yolo Live specifically to work as an in-between of constant bit rate and variable bit rate. It will do both. It will vary the bit rate and the frame rate throughout your broadcast in order to make sure that you have a good constant looking image. Now, this has come a long way since its implementation and is one of my favorite ways to stream in data starved areas. For example, farm weddings or funerals. I love to use constant quality in an area that does not have very well supported wireless infrastructure for me, or I can't get Wi-Fi from the venue. Generally, however, constant bitrate, CBR, will lead to your highest quality setting possible. After we've chosen the bitrate that we want to stream, the higher the bitrate, the higher the quality, we need to choose our frames per second. In this instance, 60 frames per second is a new feature of Yellow Box Mini. None of the other Yellow Box have this currently. So 60 frames per second is set, so if you want that nice, crystal clear, sharp, high frame rate, specifically for video games and other live content, this is perfect. But we also have 55.94, 48 frames a second, 30 frames a second, 29.97, 25, 24, and of course, 20 frames per second. In this instance, should I want to stream, I know that YouTube allows streaming in 1080p, but Facebook only allows streaming in 720p for most accounts. Business accounts can stream in 1080p on Facebook. But here, since we're streaming to both of them, I need to make sure that my stream setting is a, at least enough so that my highest stream quality can be set. Earlier, we did a network test and we found that I am actually streaming and have the capability to have 10 megabits per second upload. So I can come over here with two megabits per second extra on my upload. At 8,000 kilobits, we are at eight megabits per second. My network will support 10, I'm good to go. After you have decided those, you can simply click go live. And here we go. Now we're streaming. Notice we're up at 73 frames a second. We're at uh, 10,000 kilobits per second we're coming through and we've been live for 12 seconds. In this instance, now that the stream has gotten started, it's gonna continue to chug along right at the 8,000 kilobits per second mark and we're hitting 60 frames a second. All from this video right here, all streamed on the Yellow Box Mini, right in front of your eyes. And we are back. And I hope that you enjoyed that walk around. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Yellow Box Mini now on top of the A7 Mark III with the Sigma 24-70 to F2.8. Check it out. Looking beautiful. You know it's 
looking nice. I want to talk about what's missing. Everything so far has been great about Yolo Box Mini, and it continues to get better because when we talk about what's missing, we have to understand the philosophy that Yolo Live as a team has when they're bringing out new stuff. And sometimes people kind of misunderstand this, and I, I really don't understand why. They have an idea and a concept of constant improvement, constant quality, very similar to that. So when the Yolo Box Pro came out, it had additional features that Yolo Box OG did not have, specifically additional chroma keying features, as well as additional features that make overlays easier and added transparency and support for GIFs and stuff like that. This was all something that was enabled because of the additional processing power in the Yolo Box Pro over the original, as well as the thermal design, bigger fans, bigger processing, can do more because it's also taking in more HDMI inputs. But some users were concerned that they didn't get those upgrades on their original Yolo Box, and there was a big price difference between the two. So what happened? Well, Yolo Box didn't just say, no worries. They said, we got you. So every feature that they could possibly bring in over from Yolo Box Pro, which was the more premium device, they gave us free updates to the Yolo Box OG. Now, I can't say that I know that this will happen directly for Yolo Box Mini, can't say that at all, but I want you to keep that in mind that although they brought out a new product and it may lack these two important features that I think are missing, I have a feeling that we'll probably see them in a few months as software updates come out because the team over at Yolo Live just doesn't let anybody, well, lie flat on their face. They continuously improve. And those are twofold, SD card video and using both the USB and HDMI at the same port. Let's tackle HDMI or SD card video first. SD card video is important for me, and it probably is important for you, for the simple fact that if you are using a single item to stream, like one camera, you would need a way to transition between different parts of your scene. And yes, you can use image overlays that you can use in the image overlay section, but those are static images, no movement. Let's say, for example, you had a, a small channel and you wanted to uh, start streaming. Yolo Box was a way to do it. You're going to do something live or even it was eSports. And SD card video is very important because it would allow you to have your intro that you could then switch out to your outro during the stream. And you could manage that through choosing your different sources. It's something that we're missing here. That seems like a pretty good possibility to come forward. But the best way to make these things known is if you agree that you'd like SD card video on Yolo Box Mini, let the team over at Yolo Live know. The next thing that we're missing, and it really isn't missing because the reality is Yolo Box Mini, Yolo Box Pro, and Yolo Box OG are advertised as streaming with one, two, or three HDMI ports. That's what you're paying for. The addition of being able to use the USB port as or as, a, as an additional video was a feature request by users early on. So it was never part of the programming for how Yolo Box wanted to brand and position their marketing for their specific products. But I can understand where users would ask about that USB port and why we can't use it for an additional input. For this, I would say, you're gonna have to make a choice. I would imagine, and through talking with, and I'm speculating after talking about this in anticipation that maybe users might ask for it, I talked with some of the team over there in the technical services department, and the biggest reason that they left this particular feature off has to do with reaching the, the 60 frames a second threshold that they want to have with this. So it seems like the processing in this small pa package, specifically with this five hour battery life, I've been testing it, getting about four hours, four and a half hours while streaming, um, seems to be that you generate a lot of heat, the small package, small process, well, small fan. And if you were trying to do that through both, it may create too much heat. That's what I've been able to get. However, my non-standard, non-technical definition doesn't change the fact that as it ships in the current version, it's one or the other. I do see that maybe there would be an opportunity for this to be an addition later on. And because Yolo Live really truly cares about you guys and their users, they may make that available. But we don't buy products based on what could or won't happen. And as it stands right now, Yolo Box in this price pack point with this small package streams at 60 frames a second, as you see, really great. And so I think you should buy it for what it is, which is probably my favorite little recorder that's out there. All right, friends, we've talked a lot about Yolo Box. Now let's ask the general question, what else is out there? What could you buy? What would do the job? And I want to answer that real specifically. Yolo Box Mini brings 
the entire suite of broadcasting on top of your camera at one time from encoding, from overlays, from broadcast, from whatever you can think of, it's all right here. Take for example my Panasonic HCX2000. Great camera, like it a lot. It's got live stream capability built in. Take yellow box off of this, connect it to your cell phone wireless hotspot, and it will stream all day long. There will be no overlays, there will be no transitions, there will be none of that. There will be no rebroadcast servers, none of that. So yes, could it do it? Sure. Did I buy it because it can stream? Not at all. Is it great to know that it has it as a backup? Without a question. But the idea that we're really talking about here is which devices give you the entire streaming in your pocket. And it's really only Yolo Box that fits on top of your camera. And the thing that I like, I like most about Yolo Box is it literally fits on top of your camera, okay? It's on it, you can see it, it works just like you're seeing right now. Many times people are gonna talk about using the ATEM Mini Pro and using this and using that. Sure, get your ATEM Mini Pro, buy a frame, mount it, you, it, it becomes a whole thing. I've tried this, my friends, I've been out there, I've done it. It becomes an entire thing. There's nothing out there on the market currently as the date of the production of this video that will give you a live stream encoder, broadcaster, network switcher, as well as a recorder with onboard graphics and overlays and into some models, green screen and things like that. It just, it just doesn't exist. For that, Yellow Box has the market. And the Mini, man, the Mini, kind of like my favorite for that. It's just small and works well, it's easy. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I hope that you have enjoyed this video, and I will catch you guys on the flip side. Thanks for watching.